Hello everyone, today we are again back with a functional equations question and uh, this is one of the problems that if you gave the test you would immediately recognize it. It's a little bit older, so not a lot of you may have given it but it's, it's really beautiful and it's really quite interesting how we can proceed with this. It's a brute force solution but it actually see you know a contest solution in its full glory. So let's begin. This is the problem number 4 from the USAMO, United States of America Math Olympiad in 2016. And you know these USAMO problems, they're known to be notoriously quite hard, especially functional equations. But uh, yeah, essentially let, let, let's see how we can uh, span out this problem. And uh, here we're going to be learning some problems on strategies and functional equations, a, a common trap, you may have heard of that before. Some book sessions of functional equations and at the end a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. So we need to find all functions f mapping from r to r so that it satisfies the given functional equation for all real x and y. And we have this weird looking functional equation expression over here. Um, well, okay, uh, let's just try to see how we can proceed. The most simple, the most fundamental strategy is substitution. Let's begin with x equals to y is equal to 0. Once you do that, you will get 2 times f of 0 whole squared is equal to f of 0 whole squared. So this is of the form 2t squared is equal to t squared and the only solution is t is equal to 0, right? Similarly, here the only solution is f of 0 is equal to 0. That's great. Now, if you've seen my last video, uh, I essentially told you whenever you have such a thing, just plug in one of the variables as 0 and let the other variable be a free variable. Just plug in the other one as it is. And once you put this back into this functional equation, you will get f of y times f of minus y is equal to f of y whole squared. And so here really two cases arise. The first case is f of y is equal to 0. And uh, this is uh, this is actually a true solution. So f of x equal to 0, which is the f of x, the constant function, f of x is 0, is actually a true solution. So this actually holds true. So and the case 2 that then remains, so what would remain? So if f of uh, x is non-zero, then I can just cancel this, one of the powers over here. So then f of y would be f of minus y. So therefore, we can just state that f is an even function. f is even. And that's great. Now again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in y is equal to 3x. And um, why am I doing that? Because, uh, well, you'll actually see, because essentially on the right-hand side, what do you have on the right-hand side? You have a term f of 3x minus y. So this will eventually become f of 0. That, that's kind of the intuition behind it, right? It's very important to understand the intuition behind these substitutions that I'm doing. Because essentially you might feel like I'm just randomly doing anything, but there's always some or the other kind of a motivation behind it. So once you plug in this, you will get f of x plus 3x squared times f of minus 8x is equal to f of 4x whole squared. And I really don't care about this minus 8x because uh, it's an even function. So it eventually translates to something like this. f of 8x is equal to f of 4x whole squared. And uh, now that's really great because now in the original functional equation, I can plug in y is equal to minus x. And once I do that, I'll get twice of f of x minus x squared times f of 4x is equal to f of 0 whole squared. And uh, yeah, why is that happening? Because uh, on the right, because on the right hand side, you have this thing, right? So, um, so it, it would be great if, uh, if, if that would be 0. And that would eventually happen when you plug y is minus x. And that was the motivation behind this one. So that essentially means that twice of f of x minus x squared times f of 4x is equal to 0. So again, two cases, case 1, f of 4x equal to 0. We really need not evaluate this further because f of x equals to 0 is a valid solution. Now, case 2 is f of x equals to x squared. And uh, lo and behold, this is actually also a correct solution. Wait, right? this, this actually holds true. So f of x is 0 and x squared, it, both of these values satisfy the green functional equation. But is that the end of it? You know, you might just seem, you might just seem that 
okay, this is done. What else are we supposed to do over here? But no, we obviously the point wise trap. This is the trap that I was referring to earlier. And uh, so if you give the test, you know, most people actually really got till this point one way or the other. There are a few ways of getting till this point. I showed you one way using substitution strategies, but uh, there are a couple of ways to get to this point. But once you get to this point, things may get a little bit challenging. And the real, the real like, challenge in this question is problem number four. So it's probably one of the hardest problems on the test. In the USA JMO, I believe this is the problem number six, right? So uh, last one on the test. So the main challenge in this problem will be to actually prove that this function is not piecewise, right? Which is essentially the pointwise trap. So uh, yeah, let's get down to it now. Uh, for contradiction purposes, let's consider f of a is zero and f of b is b squared for a and b greater than zero. Obviously, standard notation or standard way of uh, going about the pointwise trap. Now I'm going to make a substitution. I'm going to plug in x is equal to three a plus b by four. And I'm going to plug in y is equal to 3a minus b by 4. And the, one of the reasons for that is essentially x plus y is equal to a. x minus 3y, which we had in the question, is b, right? And 3x minus y, which is also in the question, is 2a plus b. So this might actually be a neat substitution. And when I plug this back into the original functional equation, I will get f of 3a plus b by 4, okay, plus 3a plus b times a minus b by 16 whole multiplied by b squared plus f of a minus b by 4 times 3a plus b times a minus b by 16 whole times f of 2a plus b is equal to 0. It's a little bit ugly looking expression but uh, yeah this is this is what you would eventually get when you uh, compute this out. So now let's consider uh, two cases. So for example, like we have f of 2a plus b, right? Now this f of 2a plus b can either be zero or it can be 2a plus b whole squared. So let's consider the case where f of 2a plus b is zero. So this is probably a little bit easier to analyze. So if that is zero and um, essentially both of these quantities need to be zero, right? To be equal to zero. So if this is zero, then that means this internally needs to be zero. B is non-zero. So this can never be zero. That essentially means that f of 3a plus b by 4 plus whatever was left inside 3a plus b times a minus b by 16 has to be zero. Or in other words, f of 3a plus b by 4 is going to be negative of 3a plus b times a minus b by 16. Now, now here's the thing, you know, f of 3a plus b by 4 can either be zero or it can be 3a plus b by 4 whole squared. Now, if it is 0, then essentially it would mean that 3a plus b is equal to 0 or a minus b equal to 0. None of these can happen because a and b are obviously distinct and a and b positive, so it cannot be 0. Can it be this? No, it cannot be this. Because again, here's the thing, right? Uh, a and b are uh, distinct and uh, this, a negative quantity can never equal to a perfect square. So again, both of these really fail, right? So our assumption that this is zero is also incorrect. So therefore that uh, kind of tells us that f of 2a plus b is 2a plus b whole squared. So yeah, that may help us a little bit uh, further on. And when you plug f of 2a plus b into uh, this equation that we generated over here, you would gain a little bit of a simplification. You would get f of 3a plus b by four plus 3a plus b times a minus b by 16 whole multiplied by b squared plus f of a minus b by 4 plus 3a plus b times a minus b by 16 whole multiplied by 2a plus b whole squared is equal to 0. So now we essentially have four cases and it's really essential. The way I'm formulating these four cases is any f of x has to be 0 or x squared, right? So I'm going to analyze a couple of values. What I'm going to do is, this will actually be pretty clear once we get through this. So case one will be f of 3a plus b by 4 is 3a plus b by 4 whole squared, right? And f of a minus b by 4 is a minus b by 4 whole squared. So both of f of x equal to x squared for both of these quantities. 
and now I, I guess now you can kind of uh, guess how those four cases are being formed. Uh, the second case where would both of them would be zero. The third case is one will be x square, the other one is zero, and the fourth case will be one is zero and the other one is x square, something like that, right? So if I just analyze this case uh, and, I, and if I just plug in the values of these two back into this functional equation over here, I would actually miraculously get a raised power four is equal to zero. If you perform the algebraic simplification, I'll leave that to you because nothing but algebra and you actually get a is equal to zero. It's obviously untrue. So this case uh, actually breaks down. It fails. You go on to case two. So case two, let's consider f of 3a plus b by 4 is 3a plus b by 4 whole squared. And let's consider f of a minus b by 4 to be equal to zero. One of the cases that I mentioned earlier. So that gives us something like this, right? 3a plus b times a minus b by 16. Everything multiplied by b squared plus 3a plus b times a minus b by 16. And again, everything multiplied by 2a plus b whole squared is equal to zero. And once you really simplify this, it gets factorized actually. And uh, that gets factorized as this. So not only do you need to read this, you also need to know a little bit about factorization to kind of uh, get through this. So um, essentially the way this will be zero is b is equal to 2a. Um, yeah, but, but that is essentially a contradiction and you can uh, kind of prove that. There's a couple of ways to prove that. I'll just demonstrate one way. If I plug in x equals to y is equal to a back to the original functional equation that was given to us in the question, I'll get two twice of f of a plus a squared times f of 2a is equal to f of 2a whole squared. And that, that essentially would mean that 2a squared is equal to f of b is equal to b squared. Try to find that out how that works. And that's, that's quite interesting. And b is equal to a root 2. So here you have b is equal to 2a, here you have b is equal to a root 2 by the equality of this. Obviously a contradiction, so this case also fails. So you have analyzed two cases up till now and both of them have failed. So maybe it is not piecewise, um, pointwise after all. Let's analyze case number three. Going slowly but surely. So f of 3a plus b by 4 is equal to 0. And f of a minus b by 4 is equal to a minus b by 4 whole squared. Again, same idea. Plug this back into the functional equation. I'll get 3a plus b times a minus b by 16 times b squared plus a minus b by 4 whole squared plus 3a plus b a minus b by 16 times 2a plus b whole squared is equal to 0. So quite a bit of ugly algebra is going on around, I know, but uh, again, this also eventually factorizes down to 1 by 16 a minus b, 16a cubed plus 16a squared b plus 7ab squared plus b cubed is equal to 0. And that it would essentially only be equal to zero if a is equal to b, which is untrue. a and b are distinct. So this case also fails. Last and final case. And let's see if that possibly fails. Um, both of them would be zeros. So f of 3a plus b by 4 is zero. And f of a minus b by 4 is zero. For the easier cases, you would get 3a plus b times a minus b times b squared by 16 plus 3a plus b times a minus b by 16 and obviously multiplied by 2a plus b whole squared this is zero this again actually factorizes to something like this 3a plus b a minus b and b squared plus 2a plus b whole squared uh, is equal to zero and you obviously have 1 by 16 over here because both these numbers are 16 but that doesn't matter if zero on the RHS anyways. So again, the only way this can be zero is a is equal to b. Again, untrue cause a and b are distinct. You might argue that 3a plus b can also be zero, but a and b both are greater than zero from what we had considered above. So all four cases fail. Therefore, f is not piecewise. And therefore, I can write f of x is zero for all x or f of x is actually x squared for all values of x. And that would be the complete solution. So getting to one part of it, like we just saw was only, you know, one part of the solution, you know, 
a lot of the people got to zero and x squared one or the in one or the other ways. But this this proving that this this piecewise trap is essentially why this problem was made in the first place. So I really hope you learned a lot from it. This was a little bit different from the piecewise other other piecewise um, uh, functional equation that we analyzed. A little bit more trickier. A lot of algebra involved. And I think that's what makes this problem beautiful. That's what makes this problem really special. So yeah, hope you learned a lot from it. Okay, moving on to certain book sessions with functional equations. We have functional equations how to solve them by Christopher G. Small and functional equations by Vijay Venkatachala. These are the two books. Both are obviously really brilliant books. And after that, a similar but challenging problem. So find all functions f which satisfy this again functional equation. And uh, again, yeah, maybe try and figure out. Maybe you'll have to use some concepts of uh, surjectivity over here. Maybe. If not, substitution strategy should work as well, I believe. So if you're able to solve it or use uh, or maybe get any progress on it, then please let me know in the comment section and I'll help you out. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.